Hi, Kathy White, Certified Professional Ergonomist. I've recorded some videos talking about how to set up your home computer workstation and what I wanted to talk about in this video is more around the behaviors and habits that you can make in order to really optimize your proper ergonomic setup. I'm sitting here, you can see my laptop's already on a box to get me around the right height and distance. I've got my work surface with an external keyboard and mouse. And we're really gonna focus this video on talking about how you can optimize what you're doing and how you're interacting with these pieces of equipment so that you can keep yourself free from any hazards in the environment. We'll go ahead and just start with talking about the keyboard. You might have a brand new keyboard, you might not. Ideally, whatever keyboard you have, I would try to keep it as clean as you can. A lot of people like to try to eat while they're working. Understandably, that can happen quite a bit in the home environment, but what can happen is when you have debris stuck in the keypads, it might take more force to activate them. So just try to, if you can make your food time outside of that, just trying to keep debris away and clean this off regularly, it will help you with avoiding excessive force when you're typing. And that is something you really want to be mindful of when you're using your keyboard. You have it close to you, to the front of your work surface. You're kind of floating your arms as you're using them with your elbows close to your sides, but you're using a light touch. You're trying not to, what I call it, attack. Attack the keyboard while you're typing. And there are people that do that. There are also what we call hunt and peck typists who have to look at the keys as they're typing. I would encourage you if you have some additional time maybe during this period and you know that you're a hunt and peck type of typist, this might be a good opportunity for you to try to work on that and see if you can get more to the point where you're able to type without looking at the keyboard because that'll also help keep your head and neck in a more neutral posture as well. In terms of alternatives to this more traditional keyboard, that's really not in the scope for our conversation today, but I do want you to also be mindful of if you do notice maybe that your elbows are coming out, maybe you notice that your wrists want to come out, that might be where you look at some alternatives to the traditional keyboard design. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the external mouse. And this is another example where there's lots of alternatives that are available. We are going to focus our conversation on a pretty traditional mouse. And the same rules apply as what we talked about with the external keyboard. You definitely want to keep your keyboard clean as well. Usually the underside is where there can be some debris and that can take additional force in order to use your mouse if you have something on the underside of it that impacts its ability to glide smoothly. As you're using this mouse, be mindful of, again, a light touch when you're mousing, similar to the light touch when you're using the keyboard. One of the really big pieces to be mindful of that I like to coach people about is not flicking your wrist when you're mousing. And by that, I mean, you are using your wrist to operate the mouse rather than what I call a whole arm mousing technique where your lower arm is really moving as a unit with the mouse. This is really more of the pattern. At the same time as you're using this whole arm mousing technique, you wanna make sure that again, you're keeping your arms close to your body if you find yourself in a more extended position like this, I would encourage you to try to find a way to reorient your work surface so the mouse can be close to the keyboard. And again, you might want to consider some alternatives to this traditional design. There are keyboards that have a mouse built in. That could introduce some other issues if you're using your fingers more, so please take that into consideration as well. If you find yourself doing a lot of keyboarding or a lot of mousing, you might wanna look at shortcut keys that are available through whatever applications you're using. For example, if you're on Microsoft Word, if you hit the control button and you hit the S button, that's an automatic save. That's just one example of many, but I would encourage you to research whatever applications you're using and see if you might be able to take those to your advantage and save yourself a little bit of time here. Speaking about time with keyboarding and mousing, you may have situations where your computer is saving a document or it's processing some information. 
That's a great opportunity to get your hands off of these devices, rest them on your lap, maybe move them around a little bit, move your fingers, move your wrists, but get them away from that typing and mousing activity. Really want you to think about how often you can break away from the activity. I call it a work variation opportunity. A lot of people like to call it a rest break, but it's an opportunity for you to move away and do something different with your hands, wrists, and fingers. When it comes to your monitor, it's really important to apply that 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, spend 20 seconds and look at an object 20 feet away, and then you can return your gaze to the screen. Something else you will wanna think about with respect to avoiding eye strain and monitor use is blinking as often as you can. A lot of times you will find as you're using your computer workstation, you're really staring at that screen and that's where you might experience headaches or dry eyes. And you might even want to take a little note and put it here on your screen and just the word blink on it. That could even be a reminder for you to blink. Another aspect of technology you might wanna incorporate with your workstation is rest break reminder software. Going back to that topic about work variation, you could set a software reminder on your computer to remind you to move away, remind you to put your hands on your lap, stand up potentially during that time period, perform some stretches. There's softwares that allow you to do that or you could even set a reminder on your phone or you could set a reminder on your calendar application, just some sort of trigger to remind you that it's time to move around. And I know those can be easy to ignore. So another idea with that is maybe you have something like a kitchen timer, or if you do use your phone, put it across the room from you. So it forces you to actually get up and get after it and move around. That's another thought. Now in terms of posture, Something that you might find yourself doing, I just want you to be mindful of when you are using your computer because I see this a lot. People really get engaged in their work. We're all really hard workers and we start to bend our neck forward, staring at the screen. And that's where I hear a lot of complaints, upper back, shoulder, and that strain. That's where you just wanna take those opportunities when those work variations show up to kind of check yourself and ask yourself, am I in the proper position? Are my shoulders back? Are they what I would call depressed rather than elevated? Do I have my arms close to my sides? Am I using that light touch or am I attacking the keyboard? Just start to look at what you're doing and how you're using that workstation because you can have the best setup in the world, but if you're not using your equipment appropriately, then you will experience potential symptoms of pain or discomfort. My final piece of advice for you is I suspect when you're not using your computer, you're probably using your phone. And again, you might be hunched over a bit here. You're definitely most likely going to be hunched over when you're using your phone. Uh, this period of time is a good opportunity to see if you can get away from technology outside of using your home computer, or if you really want to be able to view or watch something, consider taking advantage of plugging your technology into your television screen so that at least you're able to see something with your proper head and neck posture. Better yet, just go on a walk, move around, be active, and do something outside of what you've already been doing all day which is most likely sitting and looking at a computer screen. This can help if you move around and do some different things to alleviate some of what we're talking about with potential eye strain, get you out of this posture with your shoulders, hopefully more upright, more retracted, and also getting your hands and wrists away from doing any additional work outside of typing and mousing. I hope this gave you some good ideas for ways to just move around, be active, and optimize your home ergonomic setup. Thanks for watching.